I have the honor and the privilege of introducing our special guest speaker for today. You know, when we were looking at when we wanted to celebrate Pastor Appreciation Day and Planet Shakers was scheduled to be here tonight for their free concert and worship experience, we said, you know, I wonder, wonder if any of them would be willing to give our pastor a break and preach for us on Sunday morning. And Pastor Andy Harrison volunteered. He said, I'm available, I'll do it. Just fresh off a flight last night at about midnight, and they've been touring all over the US, originally from Tasmania. Yeah, none of y'all even knew that existed, did you? It's a real place. Tasmania, and then in 2006 moved to Melbourne, Australia to join the Global Planet Shakers Ministry. <laughs> Began volunteering in their youth group and serving, attending their Bible college, and then later developed into their youth pastor of Planet Boom that sees thousands and thousands of young people come into those branch campuses all over the world every week. And he's also a kind of okay drummer sort of like, you know, he's decent enough to be touring all over the world with Planet Shakers. And we are so thrilled that he is here bringing that planet shaking anointing to World Harvest Church this morning, not to mention a really cool accent. So we welcome you, Pastor Andy. This pulpit is yours. We call it your home. Thank you so much for being with us. My goodness, what an amazing place and what an honour to be here this morning, what an honour to be with you and what an honour to join in with you honouring your pastors this morning and we say pastors, you say pastor, but Pastor Rod, Parsley, Miss Ashton, the whole team is Joni watching along. We're just so honoured to be with you here, Planet Shakers. We cannot wait for tonight. It is going to be so amazing. Please come and join us. We're going to party. We're going to praise God. We're going to worship. It's just going to be amazing. But I know God is wanting to do something so powerful this morning. I know He already is. Allow me to pray for you, would you? Why don't you extend your hands, would you? Close your eyes. Would you put all of your attention on Jesus this morning? He's the reason that we're here. He's the reason that we sing. He's the reason that we celebrate. He is the name above all names. And Lord, we welcome you into this place this morning. We believe your word. Your word promises that where two or three gather together in your name, you are there amongst us. But Lord, we don't just, we don't want to just assume that. We want to know that by experience. And so right now, Holy Spirit, we welcome you into this place. We open up this atmosphere to you. Come and do what you would want to do. Holy Spirit, come and bring miracles to every life. Come and bring breakthrough to every family. Lord, even those watching online, Holy Spirit, we invite you to come and minister to them. Do what only you can do. We're hungry for you. We're expectant of you this morning. And we know that you breathe upon your Word. Cause it to come to life in our hearts, in our spirits. In the name of Jesus, we all agree on that. And if you do, would you say a big amen this morning? Amen. 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 Is it good to be in the house of God? Yeah. My goodness, it's so good to be with you this morning. You may take your seats and uh, I hope you can understand me. My accent, is it all right? It's, it's a... Well, <laughs> I'll do my best to, to, to talk slowly enough that you can follow along because I'd hate you to miss the Word of God just on, on account of my accent. But in Australia, we just, we, we tend to talk really fast and we get really lazy with everything because that's the way things are down there south, really far south, a long way past anything south. That you, we're, 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 the, we're the great south land of the Holy Spirit, they say, and we agree with that. But I'm from as far south as you can get in Australia. We mentioned it, Tasmania. It's this little island, the southern part of Australia. If you ever get around to looking at a map and finding out where Australia is, then you might find out Tasmania is at the bottom. If you ever watch Looney Tunes, there's a thing on there called the Tassie Devil. We have things other than devils down there. That's an animal, by the way. 
But I'm, I'm from, uh, obviously, Tasmania. But Planet Shakers, what an amazing, amazing ministry and my honour to be a part of. And I, I'm here um, on behalf of my pastors, Pastor Russell and Sam Evans, and uh, everything... Everything they have done, you know, in the same way we're honor, honoring Pastor Parsley this morning. I mean, it's my absolute privilege to represent my pastors. My life has been so changed, so impacted by them. I am a product of their ministry. My life was changed in a Planet Shakers youth conference. And I decided these are my people. They love worship. They love the presence of God. That's what I want to be about. And, uh, and our nation has been so rocked by what Planet Shakers has done, and of course, all around the world. And, and we, we love God. And, and I know that we are honored to be here this morning because we found people that equally love God. So we're looking forward to joining with you. Allow me to get to the Word of God. We're going to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 19 to 22. Now, it was mentioned, I am a youth pastor, which really just means I have an excuse to be immature. And I am a drummer, which really just means I have an excuse for hitting things. It's a fantastic combination. But being a youth pastor, it's my job to raise a generation to love the Word of God. Now, hang on, before I go any further, I believe I need to do something here. Just to really officially launch myself into this family. Oh, hey! I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know what that means. No I, no, I do, I do. Now, where was I? We just had to take a brief. <laughs> a brief intermission. But it's my job to raise a generation to love the Word of God, to love the presence of God. And one thing that we do around the Word of God is that we love to cheer when we read the Word of God. I've discovered that people get very excited about football. I've discovered, I've discovered that people get very excited about food. Where I come from, we get very excited about coffee. We get very excited about a lot of things and I've seen people that will jump to their feet, holler at the screen and, and shout and do all kinds of things when it comes to some sport game. But when it comes to the Word of God, they just... They're talking to someone else. No, we love to get excited about the Word of God because I don't mind getting excited about a football game. I don't mind getting excited about something like that, but I understand that's not going to last very long. But when it comes to the eternal Word of God that has the power to change my life, has the power to turn my situation around and my circumstance, that's worth shouting about. That's worth getting excited about. There's this little thing we like to do. When, you're, when your team wins... Yes! Yes! When they kick that goal, they do something. I don't know. I was trying to explain Australian rules football. YouTube it. Don't worry. I can't explain it right now. But when your team kicks, yes! So this is what we do in our youth ministry. When, when I say turn to the bar, people jump up and they go, yes! Just because we're family now. I was wondering if we could try it. So I'm going to tell you the scripture. And if you believe the power of the Word of God is your victory, if you believe the Word of God is worth getting excited about, if you can get yes to a goal being kicked, then you can say a yes to the Word of God in your life. So if you're ready for the Word of God, here we go, wait. Yeah, I want to do that too, it's cool. If you're ready for the Word of God, now the key to it is you just do it and then you sit back down like nothing happened. It's just for effect, it's just to remind the devil, all right. Please turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 19 to 22. <laughs> what? Please turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 19 to 22. <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you know about that? Here we go. Let me read it. Get too excited, I forget to read. For Jesus Christ, the Son of God, does not waver between yes and no. 
Come on, say amen to that. He's the one whom Silas, Timothy and I preach to you and as God's ultimate yes, He always does what He says. For all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes. And through Christ, our amen, which means yes, ascends to God for His glory. It is God who enables us along with you to stand firm for Christ. He has commissioned us and He has identified us as His own by placing the Holy Spirit in our hearts as a first instalment that guarantees everything He has promised us. Jesus is God's yes. I want to preach to you this morning just for a few moments, if it's okay with you. Along the title, Yes God. Come on, somebody say yes God. If you know anything about this God we worship, if you know anything about His character, anything about His promises, anything about what He's like, then you know that almost all of His relationship with mankind, with humanity, is an invitation. All of His promises, when you begin to read them, His promises for blessing, His promises for health, His promises for prosperity, His promises for, for salvation, all, all of these promises in the Word of God, all, all of them are an invitation, an extended invitation to you and I that, that we might participate in the glory of God, that we might participate in, in what God has for us. They're an invitation. Even His commands, when you begin to read back through the Old Testament and into the New Testament, when you begin to understand the nature of God, you understand that even His commandments are invitations. Even when He says, do not, it's really an invitation to do. Even when He says, have not, it's really an invitation to have. God is a yes God. And everything that He has for you this morning, friend, I don't know how you found yourself in church this morning. I don't know how you've been going lately or what's going on in your life. But I want you to understand that God still has an invitation for you. His invitation is extended to you. His invitation is open to you. And you need to know something about the character of the God we serve and the character of the God we worship. He is an inviter by nature and His invitation is open to you. You read it all the way through the Bible. He's inviting, he's, he's inviting the people of Israel. He's inviting Abraham. He's, he's inviting generation after generation. And praise God for the New Testament where His invitation through Jesus Christ was opened up even to the Gentiles, even to those from Tasmania. With Tassie devils. His invitation was opened up to every generation, to all walks of life, to everybody, to all who would believe. He has an invitation for you this morning. I don't know what it is that you need. I don't know what need you're in, but I know enough about God to know that He has an invitation. So many people think so many funny things about God. We, we come from a, a nation that is very secular. A generation that we're in in Australia, it, it, it's, it's very secular. It's, it, it, there, there's, a, there's a movement or there has been away from the church, but I'm praising God for a generation that He's rising up, right? He's raising up right now that is turning their hearts back to God. I'm praising God for a generation that, that, is, that is so sick and tired of being let down by a secular system. It's been promised a lot and delivered nothing that they're saying there must be a God out there. I'm praising God there's a generation like that rising up in the United States as well. Come on, how many believe the greatest revival is coming in this generation? The greatest move of the Spirit of God. He's not done in your nation. Come on, God is doing something. We come from a nation though that, 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 that has been, has been, I don't want to prophesy right now, but has been so far from God. In our nation, the average size church is 70 people. Planet Shakers, that's why what God is doing in Planet Shakers right now is, is so profound. And just, just the other week, in a regular week of church, we saw 450 decisions for Jesus in a regular week of church. That's worth praising God about. <laughs> Seen 1,500 new people come through our doors in a month. There's something to happen in Planet Shakers. It's, it's not normal. In our youth ministry, we've seen over 1,500 decisions for Jesus this year. On our Friday nights when we have youth ministry, there's a generation turning back to Jesus. But, but in our nation, Australia, I know, I know it's the same here. 
So many people think so many strange things about who God is. They, they, they assume that He's a no God. They, they assume that he's about, he's about saying no to them. They assume that He's out to say no to every question they've ever had and, and every desire they've ever, ha ever had and, and anything that would be going on in their life. They assume that God is a no God and, and they begin to read His character or misread His character through things that they've heard or things that they've, that, that they've read or all of these kinds of things. They misread the character of God and they, they assume that He's a no God. I want to tell you, when, even when you begin to read the Word of God through that kind of understanding, you can begin to misinterpret who He is. He's not a no God. He's not out there to shut you down, to shut down your potential, to shut down your dreams, to shut down who you could be. God is a yes God. He's the kind of God that's saying yes over your health. Come on, somebody. Who am I preaching to this morning? He's the kind of God that's saying yes over your family. He's the kind of God that's saying yes over your finances. He's a, he's a yes God. Now, I, I don't, don't misread me. He still says no. He's not afraid to say no. He says no to a lot of things. But when you understand His character, like I said a moment ago, He's only saying no to set you up for a greater yes. Thou shalt not. Why? Is it because I want to hold you back? Is it because I want to shut you down? Is it because I want to withhold from you? No, it's because I want to pour out on you. And I understand by saying yes to that, you're never going to become the person that I have for you. You're never going to enter into my blessing acting like that, behaving like that, holding yourself back like that. So I'm going to say a no here. But you've got to trust my character enough to know that there is a yes in my heart for you here. I don't know who's been facing a no lately. Maybe it's a setback in your business. Maybe it's a, it's a setback in your family. Maybe it's a, it's a I, I don't know what it is. The no you've been facing, but you've got to put your faith in the character of God. You've got to put your faith in the promises of God enough to know that there is a yes on its way. It may not be on your terms. It may not be by your timing, but there is a yes on its way because that is the kind of God in Jesus. I want you to understand this. If there's a question in your heart this morning, can God heal me? God's answer is already in Jesus and it's a resounding. If there's a question in your heart this morning, can God provide for me even though I've messed up? It's my own fault I found myself in this situation. I understand God will want to provide for somebody else, but what about me? It's my own fault. And if there's a question in your heart, can God provide for me in this? Your answer is already in Jesus Christ and it's a resounding. Yes. Don't just take it from me. There's a few witnesses around you right now. Yes. Yes over your finances. Yes over your health. Yes over your family. They might be away from God right now. There's a yes. I don't know who needs that promise of yes. I don't know who's been holding out hope for this yes. But there is a yes for you in church this morning. I don't know if you were expecting a miracle. You might have just been sitting in your regular seat. You might have just been coming, doing your regular thing. But there is a yes in the house for you this morning. His name is Jesus. I'm so glad God said yes to me in Jesus. We have a 7 a.m. prayer meeting, Pastor. We, we started it this year in our church, a 7 a.m. prayer meeting on a Wednesday morning. And we have hundreds, if not thousands, come out for a 7 a.m. prayer meeting because we're hungry for God. We started the other morning. Pastor Russell said, hey, we're going to start thanking God because the Bible says enter into His gates with, with praise and thanksgiving. And so we began to thank God. Now, it's 7 a.m. I love God, I promise. I'll be honest with you right now. I'm... Thanking God for some sleep, you know what I mean? I was thanking God for some, just wake me up a little bit, you know? So I start thanking God, but then all of a sudden, in the middle of thanking God, some of my sense hit me. It's like all of a sudden that reminder of, hang on a second. I have no place being in your presence. It might be 7 a.m., but I'm ready to shout right now because I, I began to remember, hang on a second, I didn't know your name. I, I had no place in your presence, around who you are, around your holiness, in your glory. I had no place to, 
to taste of your presence. And yet here I am just boldly at 7 a.m. waking up. I need to thank you, God. I need to I need to stop and thank you that there is a yes before I said yes to you there was already a yes in your heart to me and his name thank you for Jesus thank you that I know him thank you that I've experienced your grace is there anybody excited this morning that God said yes over you oh thank you Jesus how many know God's invitation is an invitation, but an invitation is only half the picture. You ever been to a, a party, you know, throw a party? I, I used to love that in school. If somebody would throw a party and, and they would send out invitations and you, you would have to RSVP to those things. You would have to say, yes, I'm coming or no, I can't come. And I was so excited the day I got Catherine's invitation to her birthday party. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this day would come. Thought I was the only one invited, but there was a lot of other people that she liked more than me, but that didn't matter. I was saying yes, but be there. Got to RSVP to those things. Now I've been married four years. I don't receive RSVPs anymore. Just have to turn up to things. I didn't even know I was invited to. I thought we had the Saturday night off and I find out, no, there's an engagement party on tonight. I don't remember getting an invitation to that. No, they don't send them to you anymore. They send them to, to my wife. So smart of them because now we have to go. I would have lost that thing within two seconds. They, there are so many people that we didn't turn up to those parties and they realized we got to stop giving them to Andy. We need to give them to Susanna. So I find myself with all kinds of things. I don't even know these people. Why are we going, why I have to spend money on them? I have to buy them presents? We've RSVP'd. I didn't even know. I didn't even know where we're going. But a yes is the other half of an invitation. I, I, I've been married for four years now, myself and my wife, Susanna, we're both the youth pastors and she's an amazing pastor. She looks after people so well. She's got an incredible gift. To, and, 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 and honestly, I'm not saying it because I'm trying to sound holy, but I noticed her in a prayer meeting. I don't know why. And Planet Shakers, I think we've got short attention spans in Australia, but we walk up and down when we pray. Planet Shakers prayer meeting, we're walking up and down, which is amazing because in a staff prayer meeting, I was walking this way and Susanna was walking this way. You know what I'm saying? And it was like this moment of thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's good. It was a short room because I could get to the end and... Shakale Bosha. You felt my authority as you walked past, didn't you? I'll be back. It's the truth though. I noticed, I mean, it was a prayer meeting and all of a sudden I said, God, and he said, yes. And I went, yes. She hadn't said it yet, but we were getting there. But we... We got there, I ended up proposing to her, it was Christmas Eve, it was the 24th of December. There was this car park, a rooftop and this parking lot, uh, you know, levels up in the middle of the city and we set up a Christmas tree with Christmas lights and Christmas hot chocolates and Christmas, all kinds of things. And there was a ring buried somewhere in the Christmas tree that I had to try and find, but you know, Everything was there ready. I put a lot of work in. I put a lot of effort in. I had to spend a lot of money. You know, we had to do all these kinds of things. But it didn't, know, it didn't matter how much effort I'd put into the invitation. The invitation was only half of the picture. It doesn't equal a marriage. There had to be another 50%. And that other 50% was a yes from her. Please. Please. There had to be a yes from her. Now, praise God, she said yes. It's when my yes and her yes came together. That's when we had a marriage. That's when there was a relationship started. I want you to understand that God has an invitation from you to you, for you this morning, but He's waiting on a yes from you. An invitation is 50% of the picture. But He's waiting on your yes. I don't know what breakthrough is waiting on your yes. I don't know what provision is waiting on your yes. Make no mistake about it. His invitation is there. His promise is there. His yes has already been declared, but He's waiting on your yes, God. Everything starts with a yes. There are some people that have been facing things. Let me prophesy just for a moment. There are, there are some people that have been facing some things and 
God's been waiting on your yes. God, why am I coming up against this? I wasn't expecting, I I don't understand. I don't understand why we're going through this difficulty right now. But God is saying, I'm waiting on a yes from you. There are some people in here that God has been speaking to, to, to stepping up in your leadership, to stepping up in the way that you carry yourself. And God is waiting on a yes in your spirit, a, we- a yes on your, in your heart. There are some people that God has been speaking to about business ideas and, and, and ventures. And God is waiting on a yes from you. God is waiting for, for you to step up within your heart right now and answer with a yes. I'm so thankful for Planet Shaker's ministry, but I love hearing the story. We just had our pastor with us in the last couple of places that we were in, and he was preaching about the way that Planet Shaker started. And what I love about it was it all started with a yes. He tells the story. He says, I was just an insecure pastor's kid. I thought I could never do what my dad did. I could never do what his dad did. I could never do what my older brother did. I've been written off. In fact, his English teacher told him, you can't communicate. And yet God said, I've called you to be a preacher. He said, it all started with a yes. In a meeting when God said, I've called you to be a planet shaker. I want you to start a youth conference. I want you to call the planet shakers. And he said, what's that God? And he said, you'll see. That's an invitation. But planet shakers coming to fruition is on the other side of a yes. Yes. I'm so glad my pastor said yes to God. I'm so glad he said, I don't know what the next step is, but I know that the step right now is starting with a yes. Here's what's amazing. Not just your miracle on the other side of your yes, not just your breakthrough, but I'm so glad as the next generation of Planet Shakers rising up now, I'm so glad a generation before me said yes, because I understand I'm part of what was on the other side of their yes. So I don't know what you're facing, but I'm telling you right now, it's not just your miracle on the other side of it. I don't know who you're going to see in church 12 months from now, but I praise God there's going to be somebody thanking God that there was a group of people that said yes, because they said, I was the one that was on the other side when they thought they couldn't do it and they thought they couldn't get through it. I'm glad there were some people that said yes to God. So God knows what it is to put out an invitation. There's a story in Luke chapter something. That's, thank you. That's what I was going for. I just couldn't remember it. But Luke chapter 14. (laughs) It's fun. There's this passage of scripture in Luke chapter 14. Are we going all right? You understanding me? (laughs) You guys are awesome to preach to. It's amazing. We're going to have fun tonight. We are going to have fun tonight. Hearing this, a man sitting at the table with Jesus exclaimed, what a blessing it will be to attend a banquet in the kingdom of God. And Jesus replied with a story. A man prepared a great feast, <clears throat> sent out many invitations. And when the banquet was ready, he sent his servant to tell the guests, come, the banquet is ready. Let me paraphrase for it. They all began, they all began to make excuses. The Bible, Bible gives three examples here. Jesus said, well, One just bought a field and he said, I I need to go and inspect it, so please excuse me. Another one said, I've just bought five pairs of oxen and I want to try them out, so please excuse me. And another one said, I just got married, so you know I can't come. (laughs) Places to be, things to do. Three excuses. What's amazing about these three excuses is not one of them is bad. I mean, Jesus could have picked any, anything to illustrate this, this picture of an invitation from God going out and people's response to it. Jesus could have used any kind of, you know, examples he could have given of why people would say no to, to God's illustration, to, to God's invitation. But he picked these three things here. And then the thing that I noticed about is that not one of them is bad. They're not talking about sin. They're not talking about, I'm so busy being lost that I can't say yes to God. He's saying, I'm so busy doing good things and doing the right thing that my yes has already been taken up by the right thing that I don't have a yes left for the the best thing. Don't make the mistake of thinking this morning that it's saying yes to God is just for those needing to receive salvation. Yeah, it all started with a yes, but I want to tell you it all continues with a yes. There's not a day going past between me and Jesus that doesn't need to start with a yes in my spirit. A yes, God. Yes, Holy Spirit. Who are we going to reach today? Yes, God. What do you have for me today? Before you even say it, my answer's already yes. We can get so busy saying yes to the good things 
Yes to the business things. Yes to the relationship things. Yes to the school things. Yes to the education things. Now I believe in all of those things. I raise young people. I preach to young people. And one of the most frustrating things is seeing the people with the most potential saying yes to so many other things that there's no yes left for God. And you know who I really want to talk to? Sit down, Johnny. It ain't you, 14 year old. It's your parents. Because who's saying yes to the house of God first before saying yes to the sport? Who's saying yes to the Word of God first? Who's saying, no, we will be at church on a Sunday morning. No, we are going to be there. As for me and my house, we are putting God first. Before we say yes to anything else, there's a yes to God in our family. Where the parents at? I'm just being honest with you. I'm glad they're not all here unless I talk to them. I want to talk to parents about that because there's got to be a yes in our family. Listen, before we sign up for anything else, and let's make sure it doesn't conflict with our yes to God. That's my first yes. That's my highest priority yes. Every other yes in my life is read through that yes. There's all kinds of reasons why people don't find themselves saying yes to God. But the thing I've noticed in every, everywhere around the world is most of the reasons people are saying yes is not because they're actually saying no. It's just because there's no yes left. Especially in the Western world. Come on, put God first. Come on, make that yes first. Here's the thing I've discovered. Every no to God is a closed door. Doesn't matter how small, how big. Every no to, no to God is a closed door. And even if, here's the, the, the amazing, the truth is, even if I don't mean to say no, even if it's just that there's no yes left, I'm inevitably actually saying no. If I choose to, to, to ignore the RSVP date, the truth is I've already said no. Every no to God is a closed door. I'm shutting him out of one area of my life and I'm closing the door on that because no, there's nothing you can really say to no. No's the end of the conversation. No, no's the end of it. No's has a full stop on the end of it. You, you know what I'm saying? You know that parent that always said no? You go to the other one. <laughs> if you were me and I'm asking if I can sleep over at my friend's house, I, I'm gonna ask my mum because I know if, they, if I go to my dad, then I know there's already a no before I've even asked. So I go to my mum. If mum says, speak to your dad, I'm like, it's over. Don't worry about it, man. There's no point. Or well, I don't know. You, you guys are so nice in America, but in Australia, we can be quite rude. And, and when we go to... <laughs> you guys, honestly, you're so friendly. You're so nice. And in Australia, though, we're so busy and we're, we're just, you know, doing stuff. I don't know what it is with Australians. We can be so rude. And, and, and so we go into a store, you know, and they've got a, a, a shop assistant and, a store, and, and they come over to, to just say, hello, do you need any help? But I found myself before they even said anything, I'm already saying no. <laughs> I haven't even looked up. I'm just looking at no. <laughs> I didn't even realize it was a human I was talking to, you know. I don't know if they were about to point something. I don't know what, what, they, were, what they were going to say. They might have been saying, hey, there's an 80% off section. There's a huge sale on that side of the store. But I'm just going, no. Busy. And talk to me. No is the end of a sin. It's the end of the story. And every no to God is a closed door. And here's the problem with a closed door to God. Everything we shut off from God dies. Ask Adam and Eve. Come on, everything, everything you end up closing off from God. It doesn't matter why. It doesn't matter what excuse is behind it. But everything you shut off from the life of God, it ends up dying in there. And here's the thing I've discovered. So many people say no to God because of fear. But you've got to understand this about fear. Fear is a liar. Fear is just like its author, the enemy. Fear is a liar because fear will promise to protect what it's actually planning on withholding from you. Fear is a liar. Fear will cause you to shut that door to God in order to protect what you're trying to have here. And you don't even realize that that whole time you've closed that area off to protect it from God. Fear is the thief that's actually taken what you're trying to protect. Don't listen to fear. Close the door to fear, not, not close the door to God. Every no is a closed door. I don't know what you've closed the door to. It's, you know, what, what area you've shut off from God lately in your life. But I want to encourage you that no might have been a closed door. But the amazing thing on the other side of that is every yes to God. 
is an open door. And when you open a door to God in one area of your life, you find Him all of a sudden feeling all of these other areas in your life. Why? Because the moment you begin to open yourself up to God, open that door to God. I was in a situation recently, and just just a, just a month or two ago, and we were playing in, in Europe, actually. We were over in Europe, and, and we were playing over there, and and there was just this moment of praying between me and God. And I was just praying to God. And, and, and I felt this yes in my heart around a certain area. I was being obedient. And it was just a small little area. I couldn't even tell you now what it was. It's just a moment, just a prompting of the Holy Spirit in my heart. And there was just a yes reaction. But the following day, we were in a prayer meeting. And I don't know if you've ever been in a prayer meeting. And it's just like this download begins. You know, it's just like all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit begins to speak to you. We were in a prayer meeting about to play on stage. Because before we get up here, we begin to seek God. And we were praying. We were calling down heaven. And as I was praying for that night, God all of a sudden began to speak to me about this area back home. About the youth ministry. About this. I had to get out my phone and try and try and keep up. I was writing all these things down and I'm saying in my heart, God, why now? Why are you beginning to speak to me about all these things? I haven't even been asking you about these things now. And I felt this answer in my heart. Andy, it's because you said yes yesterday in this area that opened your heart up and now all of a sudden you're available to receive from me in areas over here that you weren't even asking about because every yes to God is an open door. So I don't know what areas you're needing to hear God on right now. I don't know what areas you're needing a miracle in right now. But I promise you, if you open up your heart and say yes to Him, you begin to find Him moving in all kinds of ways, all kinds of areas, all kinds of things. So I had the privilege, we're going, we're going to finish in just a minute, but I have a, have a privilege of writing some of our songs in Planet Shakers. And I've got to be honest with you, I never planned on doing that. I never grew up thinking, there are people that do and praise God for them, but I never grew up thinking, I'm going to write songs. I play the drums. Drums doesn't really go with writing songs. Yeah! <laughs> so write to a beat, you know. I had two fingers on a piano. No, that no, that no, that no, no, no. That's why I was trying to work out. I had no plans on on writing songs, but the problem with me is, is I love the presence of God. Hey, I don't know about you, but when I when you love something so much, I, I also love the ocean. I love going to going to the ocean, seeing a sunset on the ocean. You know, there is nothing quite like that. I know we're a little ways from it here, but where the ocean is amazing. And when I see something that I love, my initial reaction is, how can I bring everybody back to this experience I'm having right now? How can I get all of my friends, all of my family to experience what I have in this moment? Because there's something about knowing that I didn't just experience this alone. This is too good for me not to share. So what do we all do? Wait. Wait. So I've got to get you to share it with me and I've got to get you to know that I was there and you missed out on what I was seeing. It was amazing. I've got to take out that photo. I've got to take out that camera and take a photo of it. It's a snapshot of what I got to experience so that you might experience the glory of what I got to see as well. And I found myself in the presence of God, so overwhelmed by the presence of God, so overwhelmed by His goodness and His grace that someone on the inside of me was thinking, how are we... There's got to be some words I can find that could try and explain. There's got to be a melody that could try and, and try and put to music what I'm experiencing in your presence right now. God, you've got to help me try and express what it is. Why? So that I can gather together all my friends and all my family. I can say, look how good God is. Sing this with me. As you sing it, experience His goodness. Experience His presence. That's all songwriting was to me. Trying to get people back to an encounter with God I had. Can I tell you, it's one of the greatest privileges all around the world now. We go into places and, and, and all of a sudden they begin to sing some of the songs that we sing. There's this one particular song, probably not many of you here would know it, but it says, I love your presence. I love your presence. I love your presence. Father, where you where I want to be. Hidden in your courts is everything I need. Now, I'm not much of the singers this morning. I was like, <laughs> but I love the presence of God. And we hear people singing that all around the world. I got tears in my eyes thinking, you have no idea the moment that was written out of. You weren't there 
when there was nobody else around. You weren't there when I was going through and I said, I got nothing else, but God, do I love your presence. I got nobody else to call on, nobody else, but I know the name of Jesus. And God, I, I want to be where you, where you are. I want to be around you, but I just want to be in your, in your courts, as close to your throne as I can get. What are those moments to me? They're a yes moment. Yes, God. What's on the other side of that? Thousands of people around the world are having a moment with God where they're saying yes. And I just stand there. I say, God, look what was on the other side of my yes. Somebody else's yes. It's a domino effect. Somebody else said yes, and somebody else said yes, and somebody else said yes, and somebody, and I wasn't the first one to say yes. I'm only saying yes because somebody said yes before me. Somebody said yes to a thing called Planet Shakers, and, and because somebody said yes down here on the front row called Pastor Buzz, then somebody else could say yes and say, well, I joined in 1997 was when I said yes, and because I said yes, they said yes in 2004, and because they said yes, and somebody from the next... I don't know whose yes you're riding on right now, but now is your moment to say yes to God. And I don't know what's on the other side of it, but there are going to be more yeses on the other side of that. You cannot lose by saying yes to God. Well, let me rephrase. Because you can't lose your sin and you can't lose your shame and you can't lose some past regret and some mistakes. There is a lot to you lose by saying yes to God, but it's nothing that you need. Would you stand to your feet all across this place with me this morning? The presence of God is here. His glory is here for you. And I don't know what is going on in your life, but I'm glad that I got to join with you this morning just to taste of what God's going to do tonight again with Planet Shakers. I wonder who's here. We're going to give a, an opportunity for salvation in just a moment. But before we even do that, please don't leave because this is your moment. But before we even do that, perhaps there's another area of your life. You say, I'm already a Christian, but I need to say yes to God. He's been prompting me with something lately. He's been challenging me with something lately. And I need to say a yes to God. If that's you, would you lift both hands in the air? We're going to pray together right now. and We're going to say a resounding yes. God, your yes has already been said over us in Jesus Christ. Your invitation has already been extended to us. But Lord, our hearts are open this morning. We are a group of people that love your presence, that love you, Lord. We want to seek you. If you're looking for a place, Lord, then here we are available. We're saying yes. With your hands raised, would you say after me this morning, would you say, Lord, I'm saying yes. Whatever you want, whatever you're asking, I'm ready. I'm available. Yes. Come on, would you shout yes? Would you shout yes? yes? Now, would you lift your hands again? Allow me to pray for you. Holy Spirit, would you minister right now? We've said yes. We've answered your call, your invitation. And right now, would you bring about what we could not bring about in our own strength? Would you minister healing right now in Jesus' name? Would you minister breakthrough? Would you minister, Lord, would you minister provision? Would you minister? of your spirit, that still small voice on the inside of our hearts, would you minister that right now? Yes, Holy Spirit, we release you right now in Jesus' name. All across this place, would you move? There's nobody like you. Nobody can do what you do, Holy Spirit. We honour you, we love you. But just now, as God is moving and you can allow them to continue speaking to you, but with every head bowed, every, right, every eye closed across this place. If you are in church this morning and you say, Andy, didn't understand much because of your accent. But I understood enough to know that there is still an invitation from God to me. And I need to say yes to Him this morning. There's somebody in this place and you say, that might be true for somebody else who hasn't done what I've done and hasn't been through what I've been through. But Andy, if you knew who I was and what I've been through, then even you would say that God has withheld and God has taken back His yes from my life. But I want, to, I want you to understand and I want to encourage you to put your faith in Jesus this morning because His grace has already extended past where you could sin. His love has already extended past as far as you could run. His yes is open to you today. His invitation is outstretched to you today. Friend, the answer over your life already in Jesus is yes. He loves you. 
He has a plan for your life. There is a hell to shun this morning. There is a heaven to gain this morning. And it's not out of how good a person you think you are. God said yes to humanity in Jesus because all have sinned. All have fallen short of His glory and His standard. All are in need of a Saviour. There are just some of us that have already said yes and some of us that this is your moment right now. Today is the day of salvation. And if you are not right with God, you're in church this morning, you've never made a decision to invite Jesus into your life or you once did, but you are away from Him right now, then you, this is your moment to say yes to a God who's already said yes to you. The Holy Spirit is moving. His love is drawing you. Your friends, the Christians around us are praying for you right now. And if that's you, you need to say yes to Jesus. As nobody's looking around, would you lift your hand right now? We're going to pray a prayer with you in just a moment. Come on, that's it. Would you lift your hand and say, yes, that's me. I'm, ne I'm not right with God, but I need to be. I've never received Jesus into my life or I once had, but now I'm far from Him. And I know that I don't want to leave this place the same as I came in this morning. I need Jesus. I need a Saviour. Not only do I need Him, I want Him. I want Him in my life. If you haven't lifted your hand already, would you do so now? Amen, 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 amen. Come on, so many people lifting their hands to Jesus. This is what we exist for as a church. This is what we join together for. It's so that you might experience Him and know Him the way that we know Him. Hey, I'm going to ask you to do one more thing. So many people lifted their hands this morning and even if you didn't, but you were on the edge of it, you know, you were like, then this moment's still for you. We're gonna, this altar is open. What's an altar? An altar is a place where things change. Yes. You say, well, can't I just pray where I am? Yeah, but there's something symbolic about leaving behind where you are. I don't wanna take my old self with me. I don't wanna take my old pain, my old past. So I'm gonna invite you to do something right now. Do we sing a song? What do we do? Yeah, I don't know what we do. We're gonna do something that's gonna be great. But as we do that great thing, here's what I want to encourage you to do. If you just lifted your hand or if you didn't, but you know you should have, I want to encourage you, would you bring your belongings with you? Grab that stuff. Grab the stuff, but leave your stuff. You know what I'm saying? Leave it there. Come to the altar because there is a Jesus who said yes to you this morning. Come on, would you say yes to Him if you lifted your hand or you know you should have? As we sing, would you step out from where you are? Come and join us at the altar as we say yes to Jesus. Come on, friend. Where you at? Today is the day of salvation. Hey. Come on, there are more of us today. If you lifted your hand or you know that you should have. Come on, would you join us at the altar? Grab your belongings. And we're going to sing it again. This is your moment, friend. Receive him. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, that's it. Come on, we're going to sing it again. Even if there were one more. My Jesus saves. Now, I don't know what you do at this church, but in our church, we love to, you've been so encouraging already, but I know that sometimes people love to just hang back, hide back, but I would hate the thought that there would be somebody, even anybody in our midst that wouldn't feel the welcome and the encouragement. So church family, I'm gonna ask you, would you mind turning to the people either side of you? Would you just ask them the question? Would you encourage them? I don't know if you're used to doing this or not, but we are family here. Uh, well, come on. And so would you ask the people around you right now, do you need to respond? Would you come forward? One more time. There are some more people that are waiting to respond to Jesus and they're waiting on your invitation. Would you say yes today? Say yes to Jesus. Come on, who else is there today? Say yes to Jesus. Oh, He loves your friend. Come on, somebody.
more time. There are some more. Today is your day. Come on, sense the love of God drawing you in his house this morning. We thank you, Jesus. We got to do it again. How Jesus saves. How Jesus saves. Is there anybody else? We've got to close this service. I've got a hand back in just a moment. But is there anybody else? He loves you, friend. He couldn't love you more than he does. He's not finished with you. He's not given up on you. His arms are outstretched. His invitation is open to you. Would you say yes to him today? We're going to pray a prayer. And if you still need to sneak out of your seat, you can do it. Sneak into heaven. Sneak to the change. Sneak to the altar. Come on, if you still need to. I'm going to count to 10. If there's anybody else that needs to sneak out. One, two. Come on, come on, you can. Three. Come on, that's what I'm talking about. Four. Come on, who else is there? Come on, you know this is why you're here. Why am I in church this morning? It's for this moment right here, right now. Five, four, three. Come on, somebody. Two. One and a half. Hey. One and a quarter, because there's still somebody. Oh, thank you, Jesus. One. Half quarter, zero. We're going to pray. If you still, you're too embarrassed to come out, but you want to pray with us, you can. But for those responding to God, we're going to pray together right now. He loves you. I'm so glad you responded. Come on, church. Don't we love this? Man. Would you pray after me? I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Then the team's going to minister to you just for a moment. Would you pray after me? We're going to pray this prayer together as a church family. Would you bow your heads, close your eyes. It helps us to concentrate on God. Would you mean this from your heart? Say today, say, dear Jesus, I'm making a decision today to invite you into my life. I know that I'm a sinner and that I'm lost without you. But Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins and you rose again from the grave and you live today. So Lord, I ask you now, would you wash away my sins? I turn from them today. I turn to you and I receive your forgiveness. I receive your grace. And I receive you into my life as my Lord and Savior. I'm done living for myself. I'm ready to live for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate.